What is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here today. I am driving home on a Tuesday. It is hot outside here in Sacramento, California, and I got ice cream in the car. I am uh, I am racing big time. I got s'mores ice cream. I got uh, mint Oreo. Um, it, it's going to be a good night at the Breach House. But last night, WWE Monday Night Raw, the war that will never end. Um, I honestly thought at SummerSlam that uh, Punk versus McIntyre match uh, was going to be the last um, of their battles. I thought that basically Punk uh, was going to blame Rollins uh, for his loss. I thought Rollins uh, was going to blame Punk uh, for basically not pinning McIntyre when he had the chance, instead going after the bracelet. And he had every chance in the world to, you know, put the beat down on McIntyre, but instead he started to, like, soak up all of the glory of the situation, and uh, instead of getting the win, he lost. And um, I thought that was the direction that they were going to go in. I thought McIntyre would then go up against uh, uh, Gunther. Um, I thought that that honestly would have been a really, really good match. Um, even though it would have been heel versus heel, I think with them going into uh, Germany um, for the bash, um, I think that, you know, Gunther is going to basically get cheered. Uh, it doesn't matter if the guy goes up against Jesus. I, I mean, that's just the way it is. I think, I think he's going to get a huge ovation. People are going to be hanging from the rafters cheering that guy. And it really would have fit McIntyre's um, gimmick of basically being misunderstood. He thinks that he is the good guy, even though he's playing one of the biggest heels in WWE history. Um, he thinks that he's just, you know, you know, people aren't seeing the situation the same way that he is. And um, even though they're cheering for Gunther, he, I, I think he believes that he would change him, um, you know, when the match was over and he, he got the win. Um, but instead, you know, Punk comes out and attacks McIntyre from behind. Um, they, they brawl out, and now the match is going to be Punk uh, versus uh, McIntyre in a strap match. Uh, this honestly has all the feels for me. This is going to be a really, really uh, good match. People say that, you know, Punk uh, didn't look good at SummerSlam. Um, I'm sure the guy, you know, did some training at home. I'm sure the guy did some sort of training at the Performance Center. I, I mean, that's one of the reasons why they have it there, um, is that guys can go in. Um, but I, I think Punk got blown up in the match because of the match. Because Punk hadn't been wrestling. He, he hadn't been, um, you know, fighting on TV. He hadn't been fighting on house shows. He just wasn't ring ready and, there, and there, it, that's not a knock on CM Punk I mean the, the guy is out there giving it everything he can injured non-injured um, yeah I think he's having a lot of fun in WWE but when you're not in the ring um, on a consistent basis um, you know working your schedule you, you're gonna get blown up out there that's that's just the way that it is and that's what happened in that match um, you know, the entranceway is, is a long way down there. It's a long walk just to get into the ring. Um, and then uh, I'm sure um, under those lights, uh, you know, it, it's hard to go. And people are thinking that this is CM Punk of the ROH days or maybe the early, you know, ECW run or, you know, in his, his uh, match against uh, Jeff Hardy at SummerSlam 2009. This is 2024. I mean, we're lucky to be seeing this guy out there. Um, I, I don't think people need to be uh, hitting him with shots out there, basically saying he's not going to get it. Um, you know, I, I don't know why they went with the name for the pay-per-view that they did. Um, basically, even even the uh, the hashtag they're stealing um, from the Great American Bash, and you know, they're using hashtag WWE Bash for this show. Um, they're even playing off you know the uh, the Great American Bash name that Dusty Rhodes came up with. Uh, in WCW that was based around, you know, being American on the 4th of July, um, the red, white, and blue. Um, they've used it, you know, for NXT um, to build up big shows. So um, I don't know what to expect, but um, this match has got me thinking about, you know, Punk versus MJF, uh, the dog, um, dog collar match that they had. Uh, that match really... It was more than I thought it was going to be. I'll, I'll tell you that much. 
And um, for as much as I think that um, Punk and McIntyre can get away with um, during this strap match, um, I, I'm all for it. Now, um, I, I've seen WWE, WCW, um, I, I've seen strap matches sometimes. Um, they go with, you know, basically, you know, the two guys are strapped together and basically they have to, you know, fight. And then how you say that you beat your other guy down is you're able to hit the four turn buckles um, in a row. Um, um, that's the way of showing that you beat the other guy down. Uh, I want to see this end more like a traditional wrestling style match that they just happen to be strapped together. Um, you know, one of the, the, I just made a video on a strap match uh, between Vader uh, and uh, Hulk Hogan in WCW. Um, I'm just not a big fan of, of that gimmick, but I think that they really can get this match over. If they just use like a traditional pinfall slash submission, maybe, I, I don't know if you can get away with that in WWE slash close to PG in the era. If somebody could choke somebody out with the actual strap. I know that uh, Cena choked out Umaga with a with a ring rope <laughs> uh, when the, when the uh, when the corner fell apart in that Royal Rumble what was it a Last Man Standing match I think is what it was um, so I, I I don't know I, I just want to see a traditional style match if you go back and you watch some strap matches uh, there's a lot of build up to them but they're not all that good you go back to like Extreme Rules I want to say like 2000. 10, maybe 11, uh, when Crime Time broke up, it was Shad versus JTG, and basically, uh, Shad, you know, they were trying to make a monster heel at the time, you know, he beat the crap out of JTG, and JTG just, like, snuckily, like, snuck behind Shad as he hit all four corners, Shad thought that JTG was beaten down, and then before he could touch the fourth turnbuckle, he just dove for it. Uh, from behind and he was able to, to get the win that way, but the dude got his ass kicked for the entire match It's hard to say that he got the win there. He was smarter than Chad at the time. So I don't know uh, We'll see um, this, this is gonna be a really fun show. I'm building up for the uh, the, the road to Wrestlemania I, I get a little bit more excited about this trip each and every day um, We got the big trip coming up in like two weeks the first week is September. Um, we should have some good videos popping out around that time. Um, just gonna have to see what the access is is like because I just don't want to be shoving my camera in some random person's face. But uh, it'll be fun. Day in the life, full day in the life videos.